Hey guys, Roman Trust here with Mission Forge. And today, guys, we're going to be making some of these throwing knives. Now, I know we made a throwing knife in a past video where we forged it out. But in this case, guys, today we're just going to be doing some stock removal. Um, now, you may be wondering, why am I doing stock removal? Well, guys, there's a couple of reasons. Well, first off, what you guys may not know is I'm a firearms instructor. And my firearms business, fortunately, has been growing. And we got an event coming up where... You know, it's just going to be like a fun range day, and but we're going to be throwing some knives. Um, but also, there's going to be a competition. So I need to have some knives for this competition. And it's just going to be easier and quicker uh, for me just to do about six of these knives doing some stock removal. Also, the winners of this competition may win a set of these throwing knives. So I just want to make sure that they're even or well and stuff like that. I mean, I can do that, forging them out, uh, but just for consistency and simplicity's sake, um, and the quality is going to be just as good, good, I'm just doing a stock removal thing. So that's what we're going to be doing today, guys. I'm going to show you guys how to make these knives relatively quickly and easily through stock removal. So with that, guys, uh, let's get started. So real quick, in case you guys are wondering, I'm using a flat bar stock here of 1084 steel here. Um, that's... Um, you know, it's a high carbon steel. Uh, normally, like a throwing knife like this here, it was uh, like a 1035, 1040. This will be fine. So we're just going to have to temper it a little differently compared to what we did here. Also, guys, um, before you get started, if you want to do this, find a throwing knife design or style that you like. Print out a template or whatever it is. And uh, go ahead and cut it out. Use a piece of cardboard, piece of paper, whatever. So that way you can trace it onto the uh, flat bar here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get to tracing. Literally, you're just going to be tracing it. You know, there's nothing, nothing crazy. Okay, because I have a very limited number of belts, um, I can't be doing the grinding down. It's just going to use too much belt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut as much as I can, and then I'll use the belts for cleanup. So. Yeah, I'll drill that 
out. Got a got a hole in there now, so make it a little easier. So I'm like borderline stupid. I don't know why I was making it so hard myself cutting the last one out. Um, this is a fairly straight lines. I don't I don't know what I was thinking why I made it so much harder, but I found a faster way to kind of cut these out. Um, like if you look here, you know they're pretty close to shape, all I gotta do is clean it up and stuff like that, so that's all I'm doing. This is like literally the sixth time I've done this and every time I forget to do something like turn the camera on, hit record, turn on the microphone. Ugh. Anyways guys, this took entirely way too long to cut out. It would have been quicker had I been able to grind them to shape, but I don't have enough belts. I know it looks like I got a lot of belts, but all those there I gotta pretty much throw out because they're worn out. Um, so I don't have that many belts in the way for... Um, you know, grinding like or something like that. I got some finishing belts. You know, for stock removal, I don't really have much. But anyways, do what you got to do, right? So we got them cut to shape, which is nice here. So now what I'm going to do is put them on the grinder over here. And uh, we're going to then clean it up, make it more symmetrical and all the other fun jazz. Um, now, the good thing about this, though, is, is once we're done with that, we get to do the uh, hardening and, and heat treating with these. And But we don't need to grind. Like, we're going to grind bevels, but we don't need to make them sharp. Um, because a throwing knife is not, is not really meant to be sharp. It's just meant to be pointy. So that's what we're going to do. So with that, let's get to it, huh? even knives, which is kind of handy. So back at it to finish this one here. Then I got one more. I'll pick whichever set I want to match it to and I'll do that. But, you know, not too bad. Back to grinding. So we got our knives here, uh, ready to go. They're 
pretty much cut to shape and ground down and pretty much ready, good to go. So the next step we're going to be doing is, is we're going to be hardening and tempering the uh, throwing knives. Oops. Now, uh, there are several schools of thought when it comes to hardening and tempering throwing knives, um, and I'm going to kind of explain them all real quickly. The first one is, is you don't harden them at all. Right? There's no hardening at all. You just get them to shape, grind in the bevels a little bit. They don't, you're not supposed to sharpen these, um, and then you throw them. That's, that's it. And the reason being for that is, is that if, they get, if they're hardened and not tempered properly, they can shatter and break. Um, also, if it hits the wood and it doesn't stick, it can bounce back pretty darn hard because it's got a lot more springiness to it. Um, that's one school of thought. Another school of thought is if you do harden the uh, throwing knives, it should be only the blade portion and the handle section doesn't get um, uh, hardened or anything like that. And then you have to do a pretty soft temper. So, you know, set the temperature up high, like, uh, like 500 to 550 degrees kind of thing because you want this to be flexible enough where it's not going to break but also not shatter. We just, we just need it hard enough so that the tip – doesn't bend and bow and the knife itself doesn't bow because um, i've had throwing knives where some were hardened and some weren't and the ones that weren't hardened the tips get all cattywampus and it's just a pain in the ass to make it stick at that point but i've also had them where the tips break so you know pick your poison in that case and another way to harden them is kind of like what you do another normal knife would be is you harden the entire thing you know from the tip of the knife to the butt of the handle here and then you do again a soft temper um, some people say if you want to look at colors it should be like a purple when you're done tempering it um, so me personally guys I'm going to be doing uh, just the blade portions getting uh, so pretty much butt up to here you know on the blade here up is what's going to get hardened and then I'll do a, uh, a pretty soft temper uh, but yeah so that's what's going to be happening. So let me go ahead. I'm just going to fire up this forge. Let's get these bad boys up to temp. And then we're going to quench them. Oh, in case you're wondering, yes. The reason why do I have these here is so that these are made as a set. So that way um, they are made pretty much exactly like one of each uh, one another here. I don't want them to get mixed up with the other knives. So I have them all as a set. They're going to get hardened pretty much and tempered as a set as well. So like I'll do this set first to harden it. And then I'll put the wire back on, and then I'll temper it, you know, like this. So that way we have uh, a uh, – we don't – so that we don't get our, 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 our knives mixed up. All right, let me go ahead and fire up this forge, and uh, let's get hardening. Okay, something to kind of keep in mind um, is you don't want to overheat the tips, especially on a throwing knife. So what we're, in, what we're doing now is we're just getting the forge hot. Uh, and then we'll dial it down a little bit. We only need to be just past non-magnetic. Now we're going to kind of feather it in a little bit. If I had a, a torch, like an oxypropane torch or something like that, that would be a little bit better, but I don't have that. Um, so what we're going to do is, is we're going to get the forge hot. And then we'll put the, uh, the blade in. And we're just going to monitor it. Okay, we're going to make sure that the tip... Um, doesn't get too hot. Now something that you can do is um, even though we're not going to be quenching the handle, something you can always do is uh, you would hold the blade like this and you would heat it from the tang pretty much up and let the heat travel up to the tip here. If you get the tip too hot, it'll cause the grains to really expand. You're not going to have a good grain. Another thing too is, is because it's a stock removal from a flat stock that was already annealed, you don't need to do any annealing. You don't need to do any uh, thermal cycling on these. There was no forging, so it's there's no stress in the steel as it is. So just let you guys know that. I know it's kind of hard to see in the camera, but that heat is slowly traveling towards the tip which is what we're trying to go for. We want, we want that heat to travel towards the tip so we don't overheat the tip.
these on this knife here, you can see where it's been tempered. Um, let's see if I can get a good shot of it for you. So, need more light. You can see where it's been tempered. You can see this is much darker than back here, so there's a temper line. So we pretty much tempered the area we want to temper, which is good. So now uh, I'm going to grab a file, make sure it's actually hard, and then uh, we'll temper the other knives. So another option to heat your blade so it doesn't over tip is if your forge is deep enough, you can have your blade far enough back so it's behind the burner and inside the forge that will uh, allow it, prevent you from overheating the tip as well. And we go down here, doesn't grab, kind of slides off. Yeah, you can hear a difference. So we got a hard tip there. Okay, so all the knives have now been hardened. We are now going to temper them. And I, I hardened them all roughly at the same spots, roughly. Um, so now what I'm doing is, is I'm putting it in my little toaster oven at about 525 degrees. Um, and I'm going to leave them in there for probably about a good three hours um, to really make sure that they get good tempers on them. Once that's done then, then we'll go ahead and we'll clean them up. We'll bevel them. Um, I'll uh, punch my initials in the handle where I know it is a uh, um, little softer. Um, and then uh, then we'll coat these and then we'll call it, call it good. And we'll give them a little test run here. So, so once this is ready, I'm throwing them in there. And be about another three hours or so. Okay, so I got all my knives in the little toaster here. Um, in case you guys were wondering about the wire and stuff like that, it's not rope. Um, it's actually a high temp wire. In fact, it's an element wire um, that they use in hot cases. They heat the hot case up and those can get up to, um, you know, uh, some ridiculous temperatures. You know, we normally set them at around 450 degrees, but they can get up into about 800 degrees before there's any problems. So those wires, in case you're wondering, it's not going to start a fire. It's going to be completely fine. Those are used for heating up um, hot cases and stuff like that. So they're going to be in there for about three hours, three and a half hours. And then, uh, yeah, call that good. See you guys in a bit. Okay, so the heat treat is done. So now what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to start cleaning up the uh, knives and then uh, start grinding in the bevels and, you know, Doing all that fun jazz, so uh, let's get to work. It's a lot of knives. So in case you guys are wondering what I'm doing, on the belt, put a little belt here. What I'm doing is, when we got this point here, I'm starting at about, I'm keeping the edge parallel with the ground, and I'm starting putting that point right in the middle of the belt. 
and I just kind of go back and forth, and that's, that's all I'm doing, keeping a consistent angle. Something else I did too was on the bevels um, with the slack on there, I went ahead and put a bit of a concave, no convex, excuse me, convex grind on there. Because um, then that way it's not a straight point, it kind of curves a little bit and it, it just supports the edge and the tip a little bit better. Um, you know, so I went ahead and rounded all the edges here, you know, so we are done with grinding everything and stuff like that. Um, now the next step is going to be is having to blue them. So I, I gotta go get bluing and then we will coat them. So you can kind of see that it's got a nice, um, you know, it's silvery, it's hard to focus on, but when you use a bluing and you go ahead and, and start putting it on there, you can see it changes it and it actually gives it a, a blue hue. Hence they call it bluing. And this just helps protect the blade or the steel I should say okay now it's time for the coating process which is actually pretty straightforward and simple um, now for most people probably bluing it is gonna be more than enough to coat this uh, but I'm putting on a uh, an enamel and a, yeah an enamel 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 coating whatever base coating on here uh, just because it, it's got a strong coating and it prevents rust and stuff like that. Um, if this were going to be some kind of knives I would be wanting to sell or something like that, I would be using like a Duracoat or a Suracoat or something like that. Um, in this case, though, I'm just using a rattle can. Uh, and in fact, I'll show you guys exactly what I'm using real quick. Let me get this right here. Um, it's this Rust Oleum Automotive Enamel Exterior Paint here, gloss. Um, and I've used other types of coating before, and they work okay. Uh, so this is just kind of a, a test run with this because I need something that's going to be somewhat durable. Figure this is going to be thrown and beat up. And this is for when I do have uh, special events with my firearms classes that I teach. Um, we have a special event coming up, whatever. And so these guys are just going to be, you know, throwing knives and having fun shooting guns whatever so i don't care about necessarily what kind of coating goes on it also what we're gonna do is once this coating dries um we're gonna put we're gonna just paint the handles orange so i can find them so all right let's go ahead and let's get ready to start coating these things Okay, good enough for now. Now generally, the thinner the coat, the better. Then you do multiple layers of that. These might get two layers of the black enamel paint and then I'll do just the orange. I'll tape off painter's tape, the front end, whatever, and then just orange on the handles. Uh, so yeah, so I'll put painter's tape and spray the handles. So yeah, guys, so I'll probably save you guys the headache with the whole uh, spring the handles orange. We'll go from there. Well, there you have it, guys. Uh, how to make uh, some throwing knives. Um, so, since I've made these, 
uh, and we've used them clearly. You can see they got some use out of them here. Uh, we lost already one of the knives here. Uh, the very first time that knife got thrown, the person who threw the knife threw it way over the target. And so far out, we just couldn't find it. So the yellow handles really didn't do much for us. But nonetheless, goes, guys, though, that's how you make some throwing knives, just by doing some stock removal and whatnot. Ignore the mess behind me, because I had to dig through my toolbox up over there, and everything came up here. So, yeah. But as you can see here, we also got a nice little sheath here for our throwing knives that are going to be used for our uh, winners here for a competition that we're going to be having in uh, December. So, uh, for my firearms business, guys. Um, so, with that, guys, hopefully, oh, and no, I didn't make a video on how to make this sheath because I am terrible at leather work. So, that, guys, hopefully, you found this video interesting, entertaining, and or all the above or anything else. If you have, go ahead, hit that like button. Also, if you've got any comments or suggestions, leave them down below. And don't forget to click that subscribe button and hit that bell for more notifications. With that, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.